Hello everybody. Today we're going to take a look at Azure Container Instances and we're also going to deploy a container from the Docker Hub to an Azure Container Instance. So, if you want to actually take a container that you found on the internet. So, where are you going to find containers for a start? If you go to here, hub docker.com you're going to find a number of containers available for you to use common containers like wordpress and minecraft servers and nginx servers and all sorts of fun stuff if you actually want to run a container from docker we can do that locally very easily we could take our existing uh, laptops or our existing desktops and we could install on top of that docker to then go and run individual containers directly on top of my local service. Now, if I wanted to run one of these containers in the cloud, there's a whole raft of different ways that we could do this. We could do this through container apps, we could do this through web apps, we could do this through Kubernetes. Um, but one of the simplest ways of doing this is through something called Azure Container Instances. Now what Azure Container Instances basically does is you have this hub.docker.com website over here, which contains a number of different containers that you can pull. So you might have, for example, as I mentioned before, things like the WordPress container or things like the Nextcloud container. And what we can do is we can create one of these little Azure Container Instances solutions or ACI solutions, and we can basically say, okay, look, I want a container and I want this thing to have one virtual CPU and I want this thing to have 1.5 gigabytes worth of RAM and I want it to be running on a Linux solution underneath. I don't particularly want to think about anything. I just want you to go up to that hub.docker.com and I want you to pull an image I specify, something like that next cloud image, and I just want you to go and run that for me. And once that's running, inside Azure, all I want you to do is I want you to go and weld to the front end of it, a public IP address. And that way, as an individual or an end user, I could very easily just hit that public IP address, that unique address on the internet, maybe on something like port 80 and right over HTTP, we could just go and hit this application that's running inside a container. There's not too much thought going on with Azure container instances on a basic level. It's literally just go over there get me that container and run the thing so let's take a look at a demo on how to actually set up an azure container instance and pull in external containers from the docker hub like nextcloud if you want to host your own cloud-based solution okay so let's take a quick look at azure container instances this is only one of the ways that we can actually deploy containers into Azure. If we go and look for containers, we have things like container apps, container app environments, container instances, not to mention Azure Kubernetes services. But if I choose a container instance for the moment, just to create one very quickly, this is one of the easiest and simplest ways of getting a container up and running in Azure and deployed online. So I'm going to pop this into my existing resource group. And I'm just going to call this container AZ104 container. That's all I need. I can drop this into any of the regions available to me. So I'm going to drop this into East US. And the most important piece here is the image source location. Now I'm going to use uh, an existing image here. I'm going to use one of the existing images from Microsoft just for testing. This is the Hello World image. Uh, it runs on Linux and it's coming from the Microsoft Container Registry, as we can see here, mcr.microsoft.com. Uh, we'll come back to this in a second. If I go into the networking pane down here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place in this DNS name label here, Mike um, AZ104 Container Demo. And this needs to be a full DNS name that is going to be unique inside all of Azure. Port 80 is going to be routed to this. And then we can go into advanced. We don't want a restart policy apart from on failure, which is fine. Uh, the key management is going to be Microsoft Manage Keys down here. Usual rules apply for key management. 
and all we have to do is review and create this. We can see our overview uh, of what's being built and we will just send this container image directly into a container instance. It's that simple. The way that Microsoft defines these containers, um, or at least defines the uniqueness of these containers, is to just weld a public IP address directly to them. So now that that's deployed, if I go to the resource of this container instance, I'll see that I actually have a full FQDN for this container right here, and I also have a public IP address for this container as well. Uh, this is running on Linux. If I go and grab that and pop this directly into my URL here, uh, we can see welcome to Azure Container Instances. This is a web host that is actually running inside that container and it's displaying us a nice web page. Now that doesn't really show much. So let's go back and deploy something else. Let's do another container instance down here and let's deploy something a little bit more practical. If I hit create on this, I might want to deploy a, a container I found on the internet. So where do I find containers? Where do I find public containers for me to use and deploy? Well, we can do that right here on the Docker Hub. So if you go to hub.docker.com, this is a massive repository of millions of containers. If we go into explore down here, you'll notice some of these, like for example, Alpine and the Python and the Postgres containers, have got over 1 billion downloads. It's with a B, a big B at that. So maybe I want to deploy something, as I said, more useful. Maybe I want to deploy something like Nextcloud. Now, if you've never heard of Nextcloud, it's definitely worth checking out, especially if you're interested in self-hosting. What Nextcloud is, it's a bit like a Office 365 crossed with a little bit of uh, G Suite, crossed with a little bit of Dropbox, but you own the server and it's completely open source. You can actually power this uh, with the Nextcloud services here, uh, or you can just deploy it onto your own solutions. So you can deploy it onto Raspberry Pis, you can deploy it onto an old server or an old computer that you've got, or in this case, I can actually go and use the container here for Nextcloud, and I can actually go and deploy that into a container instance. So if I pop in here into Nextcloud, what I really need to do is see literally the name here, Nextcloud. So this, thankfully, is a unique name in the entirety of the Docker Hub system. So there's a lot of documentation here, and if you do want to run this on your own services, you're going to have to read this documentation. There's no kind of getting around it. The documentation is there for a reason here, um, and you're not going to be able to point and click and figure this stuff out without reading the docs. So I'm going to come back into this container instance here. I'm going to call this next cloud. Now, notice here, this image source location. This is the important bit. This quick start images is linked down to this um, drop down box here. And these are just things like the hello world, just allowing you to deploy a very basic image uh, to deploy a container instance. This is an Azure container registry. You will have to set one of these up before you get started. And the Azure container registries will contain your own Docker containers. This is the one that I'm interested in though, other registry. So if I click on other registry, you'll notice it says here, if not specified, Docker Hub will be used for the container registry and the latest version of the image will be pulled. Okay, excellent. So on Docker Hub here, we can see that this next cloud is literally called next cloud. So if I just type in next cloud in here, and deploy this onto Linux with one vCPU and 1.5 gigs worth of RAM. Maybe we want to change this container instance here, give it a couple more cores, give it a little bit more memory if I really want to. We can actually deploy GPU instances if they're available as well. I'm going to do the same logic down here as well. I'm going to call this my next cloud demo. And this is going to link to port 80. Now, if you notice on this official Nextcloud image here, if you read the documentation a little bit, you'll notice that the initial Docker run that they provide actually runs on port 80. This is actually designed to run behind something like an Nginx proxy to basically proxy in HTTPS. You can stick HTTPS on here, and there is some um, instructions down here for SSL, but there's a little bit more setup to do there. So this is running just in plain HTTP at the moment. 
I'm going to go next on this one and I'm going to go to review and create. Now this might take a little bit longer because what's going to happen is Azure is actually going to pull that Nextcloud image from hub.docker.com directly into this container instance and start it for me. So we'll just wait for that to deploy. Right, so now we have our Nextcloud deployed and if I go to that re resource, um, I have an FQDM for it and an IP address as well. So let's go and grab that, copy to clipboard, and let's go and paste that in and see what I've got. And I should have, if we wait for it to open up, my next cloud. And I can now create an admin account. And I'll just create this admin account as admin and give this a very quick default password. And I can hit install. Now, this will take a few minutes to actually set up Nextcloud. Remember, this is actually setting up entirely inside this Azure Container Instance system. There is one major glaring problem here with this Container Instance. This is going to be saving some data. In fact, if we look at the Nextcloud documentation, we can see that this is actually going to be saving data to these various folders. And these various folders are inside the container. And one of the very first things you will find out about containers when you start to play with them is that containers are ephemeral. If I stop and start this container again, or I delete this container and redeploy it, I will say bye bye to all of my data inside this next cloud environment what we need to do is we definitely need to redirect this information onto some more permanent storage inside azure now i'm not going to go through that in this video but i am going to link you to the right piece of documentation to be able to figure it out yourself mounting an azure file share in the azure container instances what you need to do is initially create an azure file share i have a video on storage services if you want to watch that and within here you're going to go and grab the storage account key and you're going going to deploy a container by using this command in Azure CLI. And as you can see in this command, there's some redirections here for specific mount paths and share names uh, inside the container itself. We can manage those files within that mounted volume with more AZ commands. And we can also see here, we could set this up for deployment via YAML. Now, since it's container systems, normally this will be operating with pipelines, CICD pipelines deploying with things like Jenkins and Azure DevOps and uh, GitHub Workspaces. Oh, GitHub Workspaces? GitHub Work... GitHub Work spaces code spaces mm, no github pipelines github actions sorry completely forgot github actions sometimes things uh get forgotten about so you can deploy this via something like a YAML file, and you can see we've got this mount path and this file share name in here, or we could also deploy this with things like the JSON, uh, the JSON files for the Azure Resource Manager system. And then you could build a pipelining solution with this to be able to deploy our next cloud correctly. There's no real easy way of doing that, point and clicky. Uh, you have to do a lot of typey typey for it. But let's just come back and have a look at Nextcloud very quickly. And you'll find other fun things on Nextcloud, like, for example, a complete file system on here that we can actually go and store um, files a bit like our Dropboxes or our OneDrives. We can also go and create different user accounts down here as well. We can also add additional applications. This is the most interesting thing about uh, Nextcloud. If you drop inside here, there's all sorts of fun stuff that you can add in. So you can even go and add in uh, individual games, randomly clean your next cloud data. Mm, probably not. Um, but let's go and have a look at application bundles down here. We've got things like mail and contacts and calendar that have all been enabled for us by default. Uh, and we can drop into things like featured apps. We can go and add in other stuff, like for example, weather data. We can go and add in... Um, Social sharing by email, social sharing by diaspora, uh, add a SharePoint backend inside here as well. 
we can see we've got lots of stuff already by default here. We've got a photo system, we've got a talk system, we've got like a team style system inside here and all sorts. It's a great tool in Nextcloud and it's an open source tool as well. So I highly recommend you check it out, especially if you're interested in hosting your own things. You've also got iOS and Android apps for Nextcloud as well. So if we look inside here, there's one on the App Store here uh, and the iOS Nextcloud application allows you to go and grab things like your files directly on your iPhone or your iPad. Uh, this is exactly the same as what you would expect from things like a Dropbox or a OneDrive solution or a Google Drive solution, in fact. And that completes our quick overview of container instances. If you want more detailed information about containers that are actually running as well, you can still drop directly into the containers section down here and you can actually connect to the individual containers. There's a lot to learn with containers and a lot to play with and deploy in the future. If you wish to learn more, stick around and I will make some more container videos in the future. And you know the routine, hashtag like and subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed this video and will join me next time. Goodbye.